So in this video I'm going to construct a uh, 2.4 gigahertz slot waveguide antenna and uh, this time it's going to be uh, slightly longer and more powerful than the uh, first one that I built just uh, three slots on the uh, waveguide itself but uh, this one's going to be uh, six slots long and uh, it's going to be uh, omnidirectional as well I'm going to have slots on the uh, opposite side so it will be omnidirectional albeit it will have quite big nulls running down the sides here so I've chosen this aluminium tubing to build the uh, body out of now this is uh, 64 millimeters in uh, diameter and the walls are 1.6 millimeters thick and uh, it's 500 millimeters long so I've uh, actually made a template that we can stick on this to actually cut out our slots so uh, let's take a look at the template because there's a couple of things you're going to have to do with that because obviously um, I can't print out a uh, template that's uh, 500 millimeters long so you're going to have to print it out on A4 and then join it together but hopefully I've designed it um, where it's easy enough to actually do that and join it together and stick it down onto the tubing so this is the template that I've designed for this build and uh, as I say I'm going for six slots this time so uh, what we're going to have to do is cut this here and then these three can be positioned here and the first slot here can be lined up with uh, this circle here and then you know you've got them lined up perfectly at the correct distance I've also got a uh, hole here now this hole needs to be uh, 14 millimeters from the uh, start of the tube in itself so you're going to have to position that 14 millimeters to the uh, bottom edge here now on the template it's slightly longer it's at uh, around 20 millimeters because I couldn't get it quite uh, spot on with the uh, printing so you're going to have to measure 14 millimeters and that's where you're going to start laying down your first template through that uh, feed hole there because that feed hole is uh, not where the coax is going to go that's where we're going to attach the main driven element to the side wall on this tubing because this is aluminium we're going to have to use uh, different methods to actually uh, connect that driven element up but uh, if you cut out the uh, template and then we'll stick it down to the tubing and these three can be lined up with this circle here and if you're going for the uh, omnidirectional version of this then uh, you're going to need to print this off twice now because this is uh, round tubing and uh, not uh, a box rectangle um, I actually need a reference line to help me keep the slots nice and straight when I'm uh, laying the templates down on here so what I've done I've got some masking tape just laid that down there in a nice straight line along the side of the tubing here and I'm just going to get my sharpie and just freehand draw a uh, line all the way down one side of the masking tape here and then when I come to lay the template on top I should be able to see this black line through that paper and then lay it down on the tubing nice and straight and uniform so I've got the first half of the template here and I'm about to lay that down on the tubing I've also placed a uh, little black mark there 14 millimeters from the uh, center of that circle there which is going to be the feed point so I can line this black mark up with the uh, edge of the tubing so I know I've got that distance correct then and then I can see this black line through the template and line it up to make sure that I've got it nice and uniform and straight all the way up the tubing So you can just about see there on camera that black line through the paper itself it really does help you to line these up nice and straight along the length of the uh, tubing and this is the second half of the template so I've actually used the edge of uh, this slot here with my ruler to get my ruler nice and straight and cut it right up to that slot and that will help me uh, again to line it up with that black line and keep it nice and straight and I've also got my uh, scissors and cut around the uh, edge of this slot here because that will allow me to actually line it up with that circle there so I'll get it all nice and uniform and uh, all straight along the tubing here and the distance between the slots will be uh, uniform all the way along the tubing even though we can't print out 
the uh, template in one go so that's the best uh, method I come up with to actually uh, join the template up so you get it all nice and uniform and uh, straight So that's the template stuck down on this side and of course if you just wanted a uh, directional antenna you could just leave it on uh, this side alone cut your slots out and you'd have a uh, directional antenna but what I'm going to do is flip it over and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So to cut out the slots then it's the same method that I used in the uh, two previous slot antenna videos. I've got a uh, drill bit here and uh, this drill bit is actually seven millimeters in diameter. Now uh, the actual slots themselves are eight millimeters in diameter but I found that using a slightly smaller drill bit you get a much neater job and what you can do is just get your file to take that uh, extra little bit off there so I'm going to drill a hole here and drill a hole here and then get my cutting wheel on my dremel and uh, cut along the uh, long lengths here so we can cut that slot out I've also uh, got a hole punch and just hole punched the uh, holes where I actually need to uh, line the uh, drill bit up to and I've also made the, the little holes in the template anyway so you know exactly where you need to drill so now that I've got the holes cut out in the slot again it's just a dremel tool and a cutting wheel to cut out the rest of the slot so I've got one side cut out and it's going well but it's probably taken me the best part of half an hour to actually cut this out and uh, I think if I was going to uh, choose the materials to do this again I'd probably try and find some tubing that's uh, one millimeter or just slightly less than one millimeter thick it would make it a lot easier but it is uh, really really dirty work I mean uh, the majority of this dust are the cutting wheels that I'm using and I've probably uh, gone through about 10 already just to cut this one side out so bear that in mind if you are going to uh, do this with uh, this kind of material you will go through quite a lot of cutting discs and of course with this much dust as well you really want to use a uh, face mask just to keep all this dust out of your lungs you don't want to be breathing this in so I've got all the slots cut out with the uh, cutting wheel on the Dremel and what I'm going to do now is get in there with a small hand file and just tidy them up a little bit but uh, I'm going to remove the template to actually do that so I can see better the uh, slots to tidy them up but before I do I'm just going to drill a small two millimeter hole here where the main drilling element's going to go so I'm going to be drilling it slightly smaller than the artwork just to be on the safe side so I've got all those slots cleaned out and filed down. I also use this uh, little grinding tool that I found useful. I uh, got a pack of three or four of these from the pound shop recently. They're pretty cheap because you can see there how it's uh, gnarled away. But it was really good to actually get in there and uh, file the uh, actual edges down inside the slot itself. So uh, one of these is really useful. Does a really good job of uh, cleaning it up. So I've drawn this diagram of the uh, main driven element then so we can go over some of the measurements and uh, this one's a little bit different to the first one that I actually did and uh, apparently this one actually works a lot better it's much more efficient and uh, we've got the main feed line coming in here and that's 14 millimeters long and obviously that's isolated from the uh, walls of the tube and the base of the tube and then we've got our main driven element here which is 34 millimeters long and uh, that's a little bit longer than what I had previously but the feed line isn't going on right at the edge here it's actually uh, six millimeters in from the end here and uh, this part of the driven element is actually 28 millimeters long and that's bolted onto the side of our tube in here so the main driven element is actually 34 millimeters long now from what I've uh, been reading about this apparently this little bit of an overhang here actually acts as a balance so this driven element this kind of driven element is uh, much more efficient and uh, slightly better than the one that I did in the uh, first 2.4 gigahertz waveguide slot so hopefully this one's going to work out a lot better but uh, let me show you now some of the uh, different kind of 
methods that you can actually use to construct this because remember we can't solder this to the side wall of the tubing we've actually got to uh, look at something different to actually fasten it to the side wall so I've actually got three different methods to show you how you can actually construct your uh, driven element to feed your own slot antenna if you want to uh, actually recreate what I'm doing in this video. This one's the uh, first one that I actually tried. I've got this six millimeter uh, diameter copper rod here and uh, I cut off a uh, length here that's uh, 34 millimeters and uh, I actually drilled a hole all the way through this so I can uh, use this uh, wire here it's actually coat hanger wire feed that all the way through that hole and I can actually solder that in place at the end and I've also drilled a hole in the end here, end here so I can actually feed in a small screw there that uh, is actually tapped itself out in that uh, hole and that way we can actually fix that to the side wall of our tubing and that was my uh, first attempt at uh, making a driven element. Now I have got a uh, small drill press here but uh, you can do this quite easily with just a uh, hand drill but uh, what you want to actually do is try and grind the uh, little section here where you're going to drill all the way through uh, flat so it gives you a better chance to actually uh, you know get your drill steady when you're uh, doing it by hand and also mark out where you're going to actually drill before you cut the length of the bar that way you've got the long piece of the bar to actually steady it and hold it in place and then come in with your hand drill and that way it'll be a lot safer for you to actually drill that hole obviously if you're going to do it after you've actually cut it down to 34 millimeters uh, your hands in the way you're not going to do a good job of holding it because also this gets uh, quite hot when you're drilling it the heat travels up the uh, copper bar obviously so if you're going to do this method drill the hole before you actually cut it then cut it down to 34 millimeters that you actually need and you'll find it's quite easy to drill as well it's quite soft copper now my second attempt what I've done I've actually used two of these uh, brass spacers these metal brass spacers and uh, because they're a little short on their own I just screwed uh, two of them both together and uh, got them actually lined up properly and then what I did I uh, drilled the hole all the way through quite easily as well because they're hollow on the inside and uh, what I did then is then uh, cut the end off here so we've got exactly 34 millimeters on that driven element and also because these are spacers they're already tapped out quite nicely so I can screw this to the side wall of the uh, tubing on the waveguide slot here and that'll give me a really really good connection this uh, method is the one that I'm going to use in the construction of this antenna but uh, I've got one more cheap and cheerful method that you can actually use as well that's uh, you know a little bit easier depending on what tools you've actually got to uh, actually construct this so this is the third method then and this is a really cheap and cheerful one but again it'll work just as well as the rest and it's just simply a uh, nut and bolt I uh, got a bolt that uh, slightly longer than 34 millimeters so I could cut it down slightly to get that 34 millimeter length I drilled a hole all the way through the bolt which was quite easy to do and uh, I put the uh, nut on over the top of uh, where I actually uh, drilled out and the nut actually uh, deburred that so you know you can get it on and actually bolt that to the side wall of the uh, tubing on the waveguide slot quite easily and also you can solder this so you can get your little uh, feed here put that through the hole and then uh, just uh, fill it with some solder at the top here and uh, that's a really really simple idea to do the uh, make the driven element now as for actually connecting to this you can do a couple of uh, different ways if you want to uh, this is an end connector I don't uh, particularly use these much I tend to use uh, SMA but you can pick these up off eBay pretty cheaply and uh, there's my uh, little uh, driven element you can just solder that directly into that end connector now I've also got uh, this kind of SMA connector and this is the one that I'm going to use it's a uh, bulkhead mount SMA connector and again you can solder a length of uh, wire on there to use for your feed and uh, put it up 
onto your driven element and solder that in place at the correct 14 millimeter height and this is the connector that i'm going to use on this antenna and finally i've got a short pigtail of coax here with an sma connector on the end and i've stripped it back and exposed 14 millimeters of the dielectric here and uh, this piece of the uh, inner core here feed up through the hole and you can just solder that in place and uh, that way connect this to the uh, outer edge of your uh, waveguard slot and that will be an efficient way of actually feeding this antenna as well now as for making the uh, base of this uh, antenna or the uh, end caps um, i can't find any metal end caps that's the same diameter as this tubing so what i've actually decided to do is uh, i've got some bait bean can lids here typical soup can size bait bean can size and they are just a little bit bigger than the diameter of the uh, tubing that i'm actually using so what i've actually done i've got some pliers and bent around the edges there so i've got a little lip that actually fits over the tube in here and now I've got this little lip around here what I'm actually going to do is glue this in place and also wrap some of the uh, copper tape that I've got around the sides as well so we get a nice contact and it's on there quite sturdy as well because we only actually have to have contact in one small area between the tin and the tubing it's uh, mainly to keep the RF inside the waveguard so it radiates out of the slots and what's nice about this tin as well is i can also solder my sma connector to this as well so i can drill a small hole through here and solder this in place you can also solder your uh, end connector if you're going to use one of those as well so uh, that's what i'm going to use i'm going to uh, bend this around like i have done with this one and then uh, glue it in place and then wrap some uh, copper tape around just to make a little bit of a nicer finish to it and what's really nice about using the uh, baked bean lid as uh, a base or an end cap for uh, this particular diameter of tubing is it's just a little bit bigger than uh, the diameter of the tubing and it's roughly about four millimeters all the way around here and i don't even have to draw a line around here because you can see here it's actually got these rings around it and the actual tubing just matches up nicely with this first inner ring here so i can get my pliers and just bend it up to that inner ring so i don't even need to draw a uh, line around here as a guide it just fits perfectly on that uh, first inner ring there so i've drilled a hole in the base of the tin here and uh, fed the actual feed line on the sma connector through and just to make sure that it's isolated from the base of the tin i've just put some heat shrink tubing around here so what i'm going to do now is solder this in place and then i'm going to get the right height here the 14 millimeters for the feed to the main driven element and basically just solder that onto there and cut away any waste so this is the finished driven element then and I've soldered it on the top there and just cleaned it away just to smooth it off a little bit with the uh, grinding tool and it's on there it's really really strong so uh, what I'm going to do now is offer this up to the uh, end of the tube and hopefully this uh, threaded piece here will line up with the hole that I've already pre-drilled in the side of the tube. So I've had to make the hole a little bit bigger to accommodate this uh, M4 screw and the M4 spacer there but uh, as you can see it's lined up really nicely so I'm just going to screw this in now and it'll do a good job of making contact with the outside of the waveguide itself and also fixing that driven element in place. So the base is attached to the antenna now and it's fixed on there, it's really really strong. What I did, I went round and put a drop of super glue every centimetre apart around the uh, base and the antenna itself. It's doing a really good job of holding that on there. And uh, I went around the sides here and just ground them down, smoothed them out, got rid of any uh, sharp areas just to smooth it off and tidy it up. And now what I'm going to do is use some of this copper tape and just put a thin strip around the base there just to tidy it up and what i'll probably do is similar to the uh, 5.8 gigahertz version i'll probably just put paint around the bottom here because i am going to make a sleeve to go over one side of this so we have a uh, directional antenna as well as a uh, omnidirectional antenna 
So I've fitted the end cap to the top and what I've actually done is I've gone round with the uh, sanding drum on the Dremel here and I've just smoothed it off just to get a nice smooth finish on there just really so it actually looks a lot better when it's completed but uh, the reason why I just said do little spots of super glue because it will uh, spread out and form a barrier so you won't get good connectivity between the uh, end cap and the main part of the antenna itself so always double check with uh, a continuity meter just to make sure that you have got a nice connection there with the rest of the tube on the antenna now the next part of this build is purely optional but um, to be perfectly honest with you I think it does make it a much better antenna because it makes it more versatile. I'm going to make a cover that will go on the antenna to cover up half of those slots on one side just like I did with the 5.8 GHz version. So what we'll have then is this cover that we can uh, put on and remove as we need it and then we've got an omnidirectional antenna and a uh, directional antenna all in one so I'm just using the uh, same diameter tube as I used to build the uh, antenna itself so I've marked off with some masking tape here so I'm going to cut it down the sides it's just over half of the uh, tubing so it's just over half of the diameter so it should wrap around there click on and uh, you know not be too tight that we can't remove it again so the method is just the same as I did with the uh, 5.8 gigahertz version so here is the uh, finished antenna and I must say that I'm uh, rather pleased how this one's actually turned out it's been a lot of work behind the scenes uh, cutting and grinding and filing because I don't have any uh, heavy duty metal working tools so it's really pushed my uh, tools to the limit actually making this but uh, yeah it has taken a little bit of time to get here but uh, now it's actually finished I'm rather pleased with it so little finishing touches that I've done with this I've uh, spray painted the uh, base end cap here and the one at the top and uh, I've also put some heat shrink tubing around the side here just because it's slightly more durable than paint so it won't scratch up or anything like that and I've done the same at the top there and uh, I've just actually uh, just brushed the aluminium up and cleaned it up a little bit I haven't uh, you know put any lacquer or anything like that on because I've made a uh, a uh, reflector cover for this just like I did with the 5.8 gigahertz one so uh, if we don't want to use this as a uh, omnidirectional antenna we can stick that cover on and uh, turn it into a slightly more powerful directional antenna and this is the reflector cover that I've uh, made it's just made out of the same diameter tubing as the main antenna is made out of cut in half and I've also used a bit here as a handle to actually pull this on and off because it is a little bit tight getting it on and off but um, it does a good job of actually turning the antenna into a uh, directional antenna and it's just exactly the same method as I used in the uh, 5.8 gigahertz version just bigger of course so I'm going to give this a quick test I'm going to use it as a uh, omnidirectional antenna first and then I'll pause the test stick this uh, cover on and see how that actually affects the signal strength and yes I will do a uh, separate test with this I'm actually going to take it outside and see how well it actually performs over a much longer range but for now just a quick test here in the lab so now that it's settled down a little bit as a uh, omnidirectional antenna it's not doing too bad at all almost uh, 30 access points there and uh, you know the majority of them I've got a uh, good signal there so what I'll do now is I'll put that reflective cover on the back and see if we increase the uh, amount of access points and more importantly the uh, signal strength of those access points by turning this into a directional antenna so now that we've got the reflective cover on the back let's uh, resume then with the scan and see if it improves things so we'll just let that settle down a little bit and it's definitely picked up more access points and it's definitely improved the signals along that range there So I'm pretty pleased with that it's definitely improved uh, the signal on some of those access points so it's definitely operating as a directional antenna now so hopefully you saw in that little test then the uh, difference that uh, you can achieve by actually making one of these as a omnidirectional antenna and then 
actually adding this on the back to turn it into a directional antenna um, I've brought a screenshot up here so you can see both side by side and uh, there's access points up there that actually drop out because when I turn this into a directional antenna obviously it's not as wide so some of those access points will disappear but uh, you can also see the access points that it's actually facing actually do increase and they do increase by a uh, significant amount so it's definitely uh, doing its job as a uh, directional antenna and then obviously you can remove this back cover here to turn it into an omnidirectional antenna and also I've never actually uh, come across a mention in any posts online any blogs or uh, any of my books anyway where somebody has actually designed a uh, waveguard slot like this one and then actually made that cover for the back so you can actually turn it into a uh, directional antenna I can't find any reference to anybody actually ever doing this and uh, to be perfectly honest when I first started making the smaller one here I've just brought this into shot so you can see the uh, size difference and um, that just seemed uh, an obvious thing to do to me to actually uh, you know get the benefit of having a uh, omnidirectional antenna and then sticking uh, this on the back so you could turn it into a directional antenna that way you're getting two for the price of one so you're getting the benefits from uh, both an omnidirectional and a directional and the two do have uh, completely different benefits sometimes depending on what you're wanting to do you know one may be better than the other at uh, certain setups so you know if you've ever mentioned uh, ever come across a mention of doing this before please let me know I'll be really interested to actually uh, read about it so I'll link the PDF in below and hopefully you'll have a go at actually making one of these and uh, it's probably been uh, one of the hardest builds I've actually done so far just purely because of the amount of metal work that I've had to do and uh, my tools are just not up to the job of this kind of uh, heavy uh, metal work fabrication so if you do have uh, access to lathes and proper milling machines you could probably uh, knock one of these up no problem at all with uh, very little effort but uh, even if you haven't, you've just got similar tools to me. A little bit of time and patience and you can actually make one of these. I've probably put about, um, about uh, I'd say 12 hours into actually making this. It uh, has taken quite a lot of time, you know, off camera and uh, sanding and grinding and filing. It uh, has taken uh, quite a bit of time and a lot of effort to actually make this. But uh, now I've actually made it. It will definitely be an antenna that I use in the future and uh, I'll definitely take this outside and we'll do an outside test just to see uh, how it actually performs outside the lab. So again hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did please give it a thumbs up. Any questions comments then uh, drop them below and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.